It envelops you, mind, body, and soul. 28 rounds over the course of nine months tests everything you have. The cornerstone of the championship, now a three-round playoff to end the series, with millions on the line. The Super Motocross World Championship, a test like no other. The Super Motocross World Championship is the most intense form of off-road racing that you could ever imagine. For over 50 years now, this sport has really run in two halves. There's the stadium racing, which is Supercross in the wintertime, and then the motocross circuit outdoors in the summertime. We start the year with Supercross, technical tracks, big jumps. You're flying, you know, 20, 30 feet vertically in the air. Once we're done with those 17 rounds, we go into motocross, and that's, that's outside. That's your natural terrain tracks. Sweat, tears, blood, you name it, we're doing it out there. Down! Oh, we've got problems! Then when you go into the playoffs, it's only three races, so you really have to be on top of your game. Those are for the big prize and for the for the big Super Motocross Championship. You're going to see all the best guys racing all year long. It's where the elite come to compete. So yeah, it's 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 epic. And nobody does it better than Jed Lawrence, the SMX World Champion. On January 6th, inside Angel Stadium, in front of thousands of fans and millions watching across the world, they begin their pursuit of a championship that could change their lives forever. A championship they've spent a lifetime chasing. Established veterans taking on ambitious newcomers. A title run that will test everything they have. Both disciplines, Supercross, motocross and then of course the smx world championship playoff rounds it is the pinnacle of the sport the 2024 title is a tall order for any one of these athletes because of the company that they're in the class is so stacked there's so much talent so much experience and now new blood coming in to the premier class too so for any one of these athletes to just say yeah i i can be that guy is a big claim yeah, we're ready Finding a spot on the gate in the main event in 2024 will be a challenge for even the most established riders. As champions Eli Tomac, Cooper Webb, Chase Sexton, and Jet Lawrence will be joined by wild cards such as Christian Craig, Dylan Ferrandis, and Colt Nichols, among others. I can tell you right now, when you look left or right, everybody knows how to win. And we say it every year, but it's true. It get, keeps getting harder and harder and better and better competitors. And I think it is going to be truly one of the hardest years yet. I expect myself to, to be competitive to, to win. That's it. The fans can expect one of the most explosive seasons, I believe, that we have ever seen. You have this next level generation rider, this kid named Jet Lawrence. You have the old guy coming off an injury, everybody's favorite, the stoic, quiet, terminator like Eli Tomac. You have Chase Sexton, the wonder kid, the supercross champion, switching bikes. You have Jason Anderson fighting for the mix. You have a two-time champion in Cooper Webb. You have wild cards like Justin Barsha and Aaron Plessinger. You got old guys, you got young guys, you got phenoms, you got guys trying to come back from injury. It's all there. It's going to be incredible. I can't wait to watch. It might be one of the most incredible seasons that we ever see. It's a long season. We kick off January 6th in Anaheim, but we don't stop. We don't stop until midway of September. When you combine indoors and outdoors, man, it is a hell of a grind on these guys, and they really got to be something special to complete all the races, and then even extra special to finish up on top. <laughs> it's gnarly on your body for sure. It, it takes a toll on you, but, but uh, at the end, it's all, it's all worth it at the end. We do a lot of cardio training when it comes to endurance. We do interval stuff. So we kind of need to be all around to be able to sustain 31 events. You also have to have a lot of just straight up strength to control that thing, especially the speeds we're going now and how gnarly the tracks get. Physically and mentally, it is absolutely incredible what these athletes are able to endure. The heights and the distances that they jump, the speeds that they maintain and get to, the various tracks, I mean, talk about a washing machine of obstacles, of challenges. This sport has it all. 
we keep coming back for more, so obviously we love it. A lot of us top dudes, our goal is just to try and win every race we can win. I'm sure that's the goal for a lot of the, the top guys. Everyone wants to be top dogs, so that's, uh, that's what makes it so unique. It's so physically and mentally demanding on, a, on our bodies. I don't believe there's another sport in the world that is a test of man and machine like this. We're carrying around a 200-pound motorcycle with, you know, 60 horsepower wrestling that. Going the speeds that they're going and battling all of the natural forces. The G-forces a rider is taking on while racing is just like any other form of motorsport, but they're not strapped in. They have to hold on themselves, and the motorcycles accelerate and brake at the same level as a race car. We don't have roll cages or anything like that, so uh, it's, it's the ground and it hurts. Mentally, it's really tough to be on par every single weekend. I think physically, it's tough because, you know, with our sport injuries coming to hand. To ride it with your heart rate at 180 beats per minute when it's, you know, anywhere from 40 degrees outside to 110. Doing that for 31 races, it's um, no joke. We're riding a steel horse, man, for 20 minutes in Supercross and two 30-minute motos and outdoors. We do it good. We do it real, real good. These athletes are out there Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday practicing and then getting on a bicycle and going to the gym and training beyond that and then racing on weekends, seven days a week. Then you see the emotion, whether it was Chase Sexton leaving Salt Lake City in 2023, winning his first ever Monster Energy Supercross Championship, or Jet Lawrence at Unadilla when he had uh, locked up that 450 Pro Motocross title, and then again at the Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum when he was our first ever 450 Super Motocross World Champion. One plus one equals one million. Oh, I knew I was good on a dirt on two wheels, but uh, I didn't know I was that good. Not to mention a $10 million purse. Yeah! It's a big carrot at the end of the day. The prize money on offer is unlike anything we have seen in this sport before. There are millions on the line for the winner, but even for the rider who finishes 15th, there are hundreds of thousands of dollars on the line. And in the 450 class, to have $1 million dangling there, you know, at the end of the 31 races is a huge incentive. Every other competitor, even veterans and legends like Eli Tomac, who was on the verge of retirement, has been drawn back to say, I'll have that million dollars. And whether you're an athlete in the 250 class or the 450 class, the incentives are massive. There's a lot of money to be made, but then there's also, it's all about bragging rights at this point. To be able to say that you're the best in the world. And now we've got guys coming in from all over the world. Suddenly, this is a truly international field. 95% of the best motocross racers in the world come over here and race. And they come from all over the globe. Australia, the UK, France, Germany, Japan. Riders from 20 countries that compete in the Super Motocross World Championship because they know that this is where the best riders from all around the world come to compete. I tell people all the time that are new to the sport, you're not going to get disappointed. It's a very high intensity, a lot of stuff happening, a lot of moving parts. It's a race, but it's also a show. Yeah, you got a lot of entertainment coming your way. It definitely shows you how gnarly, especially the competition gets when you put all of us together. It's going to be intense. Young guys, old guys. Some really good racing, a lot of intensity. Riders are going to be far banging out there. That's why we got to be in, in our best top shape and ready to go. It's tough, but um, it keeps it interesting for everyone watching. The challenge that's ahead, like, I'm totally up for it. My thing is, is like, come out firing, especially that first one. Yeah, I guess we'll see. It's going to be fun. Whoever's feeling it that night can easily win. The Super Motocross Preview Show is brought to you by Monster Energy, proud partner of Monster Energy Supercross, and the Utah Sports Commission, proud partner of Monster Energy Supercross. In the Super Motocross World Championship's long and colorful history, there are corners of the world where the sport has ingrained itself, become part of the culture. You want two posters? Following in the footsteps of those that paved the way for him, Jet Lawrence rose from humble beginnings into the grandest stage of them all. We had a bit of a, bit of a struggle at the start in 2016. I was just so young, so it was kind of hard to pick up on everything. Now let's look back and notice sacrificing this to go do this, but every day 
was training and uh, all right, we need to make it, we need to make it, we're gonna make it. I'm not a very different and special kid. I'm a quite, I feel like I'm a fairly <laughs> normal kid. I can get along with a lot of people. I'm always, I don't really like confrontation much. Um, fun, hard working person, like a, a typical uh, Aussie, just a hard worker, but also loves having fun while doing it. I don't think I've ever met anyone like Jet, actually. As, not just as an athlete, but as an individual, as a person too. He is funny, he's approachable, incredibly talented on a dirt bike, humble, modest. It's tough to even put in a nutshell all the, the facets that are Jets and Lawrence. He's the right amount of cocky and funny and outgoing. Funnily enough, he was like the third child, right? So, and parents will understand this. The third child is like, you'll let him fall over the step, you'll let him eat the dirt. They just, just work it out. And poor old Jet the third was just exactly that. It sounds bad, but it's the truth. It's the third child, it just, get, it just fits in. It's been really cool to see so many young fans come to the races in the last two years to see Jet. Here we are now. He gets on the microphone, he has a good time, he's raw, he's real. He's just like a little kid. He is charismatic, but I can tell you this is real. You excited for this next moto, bud? Yeah. I watch him on the track and I'm blown away by how a 20 year old kid can figure out how to go that fast. He is the full package and that is why Jet Lawrence has taken this sport by storm. Family sacrificed everything to get here. They left Australia, they went to Europe, raced the motocross GPs with his older brother Hunter with Jet in tow. 17 year old Jet Lawrence is a Monster Energy Supercross main event winner. This dog went ho ho. Although just 20, he has already etched his name in the history books alongside the all-time greats, becoming just the third rider in history to complete a perfect 450 Pro Motocross season, joining Ricky Carmichael and James Stewart. And while there isn't much left to accomplish on his resume, there is one box left to check off. And that is going to be the Monster Energy Supercross series. He's gonna be taking a crack at some of the best ever to do it. Eli Tomac is back. Chase Sexton, Cooper Webb, then, of course, Ken Roxon. We're stoked Eli's coming back. We heard he was retiring, but thankfully he came back and is, and is racing. I think seeing Jet Lawrence full-time in the 450 class in 2024 is super exciting. Maybe we're watching the greatest ever in the making. This is Supercross now, so can he, at 20 years old, go up against multi-time champions? in his rookie year on a 450. I don't know, I don't want to bet against it, but it's a tall order. Growing up in a small town was the way of life for Chase Sexton. And despite the long winters of the Midwest, he has risen to the top of the sport, and in the process, grown closer to those that surround him. Chase Sexton is, is a guy from the countryside. He's coming from Illinois. He's very close with his family, with his brothers and sisters, and with his, with his parents. This is one of the nicest guys you, you can meet. Grew up on a farm, had a track, and it kind of just gave me that, I don't know, it's, I feel like people from the Midwest are just a little bit different, so very driven. I think throughout the years, I've dealt with mistakes I've made, and I feel like I've rebounded very well, and that's kind of my motto, is just get knocked down seven times, stand up eight, and that's uh, something I, I live by. Chase Sexton's biggest weapon is his raw speed. He can arguably go faster than anybody on any racetrack at any given time. He was very consistent all year long. He never gave up. Chase Sexton wins in Denver to stamp his authority on this Monster Energy AMA 450 championship. Being the defending champion feels nice, having the number one plate. The celebration didn't last as a long summer provided motivation for 2024. It wasn't such an enjoyable time, seeing his then Honda teammate Jet Lawrence go 22-0 for a perfect season. It was a very uh, tough summer for me mentally. I can't stand losing, and I feel like I hate losing more than I like winning, so that's what keeps me going. We lose track of exactly how strong he ended the Super Cross season. Once he won in Detroit, he finished top five in every race after that and almost all of those were podiums. 
but uh, there's been some blemishes that bring some criticism where he has some unforced errors. Sometimes you get that feeling you're not focused anymore. You know, there's something going on for maybe a few seconds and catastrophe, I mean, he's on the ground. Sexton goes down. And the ultimate question for Chase Sexton is the propensity for crashing on the Honda. Was that because of the Honda or was that because of Chase? After spending his entire career with one brand, Chase Sexton has decided to make a change as he moves over from Honda HRC to Red Bull KTM. Going to Red Bull KTM, a storied team with wonderful leadership, Roger DeCosta, Ian Harrison. I think this is going to work, and it's going to work big for Chase Sexton. Taking KTM back to the top would be obviously my, my main goal. For me, obviously, I want to win, so um, they're along for the ride with me, so it's going to be fun, and I think I'm capable of a lot more, and that's something that I feel like I needed to change for. To be able to land Chase is a, is a really big deal for us, and, uh, and of course, we don't want to let him down now. He seems to get his motivation from deep inside himself. He, he wants to prove that he is a top athlete, I think. This year, I'm working as hard as I can, even harder than I did last year, and coming into this season confident and hopefully defend my, my championship. That's my goal, and land on the podium every race and get more race wins than I had last year. Quiet by nature, Eli Tomac isn't one to draw attention to himself. A strong work ethic instilled in him from a young age has defined him. Eli Tomac really is a humble hero for everything that he has accomplished in this sport, whether it be in Supercross or in Motocross. He doesn't really scream from the rooftops about his career accomplishments. He is now up there with the greats of this sport. He's got all the titles that you could possibly want on a 250 or a 450, and he does it all in relative silence. I, it's just, it's a cool spot to be in, and uh, yeah, I don't got anything else to say. He lets his riding do the talking. He's not very active on social media, and he's a throwback where he does most of his riding by himself on his compound out in Colorado. There are moments that will forever withstand the test of time. Moments you remember exactly where you were. Inside Empower Field at Mile High in Denver, Colorado was one of those. I believe I was 18 points up on the championship lead and I was just going through the motions, going through the rhythm section and my Achilles just popped. You know, it, it tore just like that. Something big has happened to Tomac. He's looking down at his bike. He's holding his leg out. Oh what? my goodness. He is injured. There was no sign of pain, none. He just looked down like it was an inconvenience or something. He looks down and he rolls off the track. And we all speculated, was this going to be the end? Toria's Achilles at his home race two races away from being a three-time Monster Energy Supercross Series champion. Championship was gone just like that. So for me as a racer, though, I'm, I'm like, there's no way I can go out this way. I can't end my career this way. I wasn't done. Returning from an injury that many thought would spell the end of his career, Eli Tomac now faces a new set of challenges. Eli will be 31 and recovering from one of the toughest injuries there is to come back from. It's the beginning of November here. I just got back on the Supercross track. I've been on it probably four days now. Um, I'm feeling great, and I don't feel like I'm gonna be behind it all anymore, so I'll be ready to go come uh, Anaheim 1, 2024. He's gonna be back. We get to see him up against Chase Sexton on a KTM. We get to see him up against Cooper Webb on a Yamaha. We get to see him up against the Lawrence brothers on their Hondas. I think he wants to show them, hey man, I'm still pretty good. You're gonna have to come through me. I've worked this hard to get here and I'm not going away anytime soon. Fans want nothing better than a comeback story and Eli Tomac is gonna try to give it to him. I joined the army of people around the world just thrilled that Eli is lining up in 2024. You know, there's some unknowns out there. I haven't raced Jet yet. Chase is on a new motorcycle. My teammate's on a new motorcycle. There's, there's lots of unknowns, but you always have those. So it feels like I'm back at home. It's good. No matter where you go, 
you never forget where you came from. I'm Ken Roxon, and I'm actually originally German, which I think a lot of people forget, as I've been here for a little bit over 10 years now. We've had writers in the past come over to the US from overseas and kind of live their dreams here, and this is the same kind of storyline for me. And I would say that at this very moment, I'm probably, you know, the best I've been, maybe ever, but definitely in a long time. Ken Watson has like a presence about him. He's like this international kind of rock star within the sport. Perhaps no rider and team entered the 2023 Super Motocross World Championship season with more to prove than Ken Roxon and HEP Motorsport Suzuki, a rider and brand counted out too many times to mention. He had been given up on, I think, by a lot of the industry. I think most of the teams thought his best days were behind him. By going to Suzuki, a brand that had not won races in a long, long time, it did something that had never happened before. Ken Roxon, a phenom since age 15, had become an underdog. I think so many people have written Ken Roxon off uh, at so many stages throughout his career. And we, as fans of the sport, are enjoying a renaissance period for Ken Roxon. This is the OG punk rock style from back in the day, and that's why it happened tonight. He came to the US as a bright-eyed teen. Today, he's a father of two and more confident in his surroundings. I'm almost 30 years old, and most writers retire at the age of 27. Most of us are family men now, and obviously we live for this sport, and we absolutely love it, but there has to be a good balance, and I think uh, a lot of us writers in the recent years, we've kind of found that balance to be able to extend our careers and, and keep going while having a family. He's just, he's loving it. He's enjoying every bit, and it was incredibly genuine. You speak to him and you see the smile on his face, and just finding that place with the team and with his bike where they're like, no, now we can go after this. While he's a crafty veteran at this point in his career, he's always faced with new challenges. I think he, he found a new motivation in, in Jet, Jet Lawrence's domination. I think I'm a little, a little bit of a dark horse for him. I don't think he knows where to categorize me yet. For some reason, I have a feeling that he didn't expect me to be as good as I, as I was. His lone appearance in pro motocross at High Point was one of the, the greatest races of the season. He was one of the only people to challenge Jet Lawrence all day long and really show him speed that Jet hadn't seen. And then of course, we roll into the Super Motocross World Championship Series and he almost wins the thing. I feel like I'm more ready than ever to actually content for a championship. Now that we have seen how everything has played out with the inaugural season of SMX last year, I think you're gonna see a different strategy and I think maybe Ken Roxon could be a favorite. I can guarantee you guys, you will not be disappointed and there will not be one boring event. This is a fact. You'd be hard pressed to simplify Cooper Webb. No rider with the mental wherewithal to withstand a grueling 28 rounds plus three playoffs. No rider more equipped to handle the mental strain. You know, I'm this good old boy from North Carolina. As a racer, I feel like I'm very competitive. I'm a good, good fighter and I, I go all the way to the end. Now I feel like I've learned to be very consistent as well. Webb has that perfect balance of aggression and precision that challenges the other riders. Cooper is a very reserved guy on race day, and I think that Cooper likes to think, consider himself as a bit of a closer. He likes to get you late in the race. The last laps of the, the races, I mean, he's there, and he's not gonna give up. He just slowly wears you down, and he'll get you. It's strategy, it's mental strategy, and he can take these guys down before the gates even dropped. We've seen him go after riders like Ken Roxon, just trying to upset them and trying to you know, break them out of what makes them so competent. And I think he has a very keen understanding of the racing mindset. He loves to be that disruptor. Just when you can count him out, he's gonna get you. It's kind of fun to watch, me as a fan. <laughs> I like watching it, some drama and a lot to talk about. He is driven by the knowledge that some people doubt him. And all he wants to do is prove those people wrong. They say it can be hard to go home, not for Cooper Webb. After five years and two premier class titles with Red Bull KTM, he returns to the only place that offered him a chance out of amateurs. He's jumping to a new team now in Monster Energy Star Yamaha, which is his old team, but it's a new motorcycle. 
I believe he's looking for a motorcycle that suits him, that he can do the things that he knows he does well, and that's why he made that jump. Like, like Chase, he needed something different. He was not too happy at KTM, and I think the fact that he's going back to Yamaha, I think it's a new beginning for him. They gave me a shot uh, when I was just an amateur rider, and they took that chance with me, and we had great success. So I'm hoping we can write that Cinderella story again and be up there with Eli. Under the hauler at Monster NG Yamaha Star Racing, we now have Cooper Webb and Eli Tomac, the two guys who prior to the 23 season had shared the last four Supercross championships in the Premier class. I think that Cooper Webb has been looking over the success that Eli Tomac has had after he made the jump to the Yamaha, and I think he wants to replicate that. I think there's a lot of respect between me and Eli. We battled each other for the championship the last really five years, but I think I'm going to put myself in a, in a really good spot to contend for another championship. The bond between brothers is unbreakable. Tied at the hip from an early age, Hunter and Jet Lawrence have experienced a lifetime together already. And while their personalities are vastly different, a special bond is always maintained. Just kind of like a better looking, smarter, funnier version of Jet when it all comes down to it, you know? Pretty simple guy, just like talking smack with my mates. Our bond is just getting, just gotten stronger and stronger each year. And, and yeah, every now and then we buy heads. Kind of depends on who's talking the most like smack that day. Are we in the bunker? I just want to see him do the best for himself, and he's the same, you know? Hunter Lawrence is a different dude than his brother Jet. I, the dichotomy between the two brothers is really funny to watch. And sometimes I know Hunter just shakes his head at Jet. Remember, title is on the line for Hunter. He's up against his brother. They faced each other in East West showdowns before, and it's one apiece. Somebody over here has a chance at wrapping it up tonight, and that is the one thing that I think uh, is what <laughs> Every champion, I think, if you ask them all, they've done a lot of losing to get to where they are. So for people to go, oh, yeah, they're just used to winning, they're spoiled, uh, it's actually the opposite. They got to winning because they got beaten a hell of a lot. In time, injuries will heal. The body will recover. But there was a moment when Hunter Lawrence almost called it a career. I think he's the oldest 24-year-old I've ever seen. Because you look at what life has thrown at him. He had to be the breadwinner for his family, moving to Europe. And, and really, they bet on Hunter. It was, it was make or break, and that's kind of the attitude we've had our whole life growing you know when we left from Australia to Europe it was well it's not like how can we make it it's well, we better make it work you know we better figure a way out because there's no going back you know we got a couple photo frames in Australia that's what we have back there waiting for us if, if all it failed and we didn't make it. Emma and uh, myself obviously sacrificed a lot of things so that the boys could race so just like any working family I guess you know we scraped and skimped and saved just to do those things. You know, we see Jeb do what he does and makes it look so easy. Hunter's had, had everything kind of hard, the hard way, so it was just hard for me to watch him, like, race a few races and then get hurt again. And... So even through those injuries, um, he knew he had enough talent that he would eventually make it reasonably good. You're not sure you start to question a lot of things, you know, when you feel like you're working your absolute hardest and it doesn't go your way. And, and then just, yeah, just kept trusting, kept trusting and, and working hard. And yeah, the puzzle started to put together and just kind of a snowball effect since then, I guess. Armed with two championships secured in 2023, Hunter enters his rookie 450 season with high expectations. Now he makes the jump to Honda HRC in the 450 class alongside his brother. We could be looking at a situation in the future where two brothers are the two best in a given sport. And by the way, these are brothers from Australia winning in America. Is that my bike? Hey. There's times where I just want to race him and beat him because I know he's the best, but I'm also proud because if I had to lose to someone, I'd rather lose to him than, than someone else. You know, it's my blood out there on the track and everything that he accomplishes and I accomplish, it's in the Lawrence name. So I think in 30 years, when we look back on it, it's, it's gonna be very special to look and, and go, no, we both did it together. While the 450 class is the pinnacle of the sport, 
The 250 class consists of the next generation. Split into East and West divisions, the 250 class offers a chance for the young stars of the sport to get accustomed to Supercross before jumping to the 450 class. As Jet and Hunter Lawrence transition to the 450 class in 2024, a new era will take over the 250 division. From different walks of life with varying backgrounds, the class is truly a global affair. Led by Hayden Deegan, who has spent his entire life in the limelight. You know, I've been watching Hayden Deegan ride since he was little, thanks to what his mum and dad did through social media and him riding as a junior. I backflip. He comes from a racing family, right? His father, Brian, was a very good privateer for a long time. His sister drives NASCAR. And he's also grown up in front of us all. And he's just learning so fast. We got the red play, and uh, yeah, we're coming. He's a YouTube star and huge on social media. He's dealt with pressure his whole life. Dude, this is awesome. I'm through the roof right now. I'm glad I could fit in, uh, the American boy on top for once in this outdoor season. So I'm hyped. This is sick. Well, Hayden Deegan was the breakout story of the year. And if you were looking for a rider to kind of pin your hopes on for the future in every aspect, it would be Hayden Deegan. Oh, my first year to have a championship, man. This is a dream come true. It was a big surprise of the summer. In my head, recited every day, I'm going to win this championship. I'm going to win this championship. I will win LA. I will win LA. And shoot, I ended up doing it. 17 years old. How special it is. Danger money for Danger Boy. He's a world hey. champion. Being the first uh, SMX champion is huge. Like, that's a thing that will obviously go down in the history because it's a new series. They just started it. First time winner it was always cool, so definitely means a lot to me. It'll be really intriguing to see how now champion Hayden Deegan handles the 2024 season. I think he's only going to be stronger, faster, and just set the bar even higher in the 250 class. It was almost like in the blood, just the natural ability to just want to work hard and literally not accept anything but winning. A new era begins in 2024. The likes of Japan's Joe Shimoda, France's Tom Viel, RJ Hampshire, Levi Kitchen, Austin Forkner, and more, seeking their first title. Who's next? There is the temptation to simplify the narrative of a rider, to judge his personality on and off the track as one. In the case of Justin Barsha, it has followed him his entire career. Justin Barsha is the nicest kid uh, you, can, you can have in the pits. I mean, he's, he's funny to be around. But the thing is, once he put the helmets on, I mean, there's no Justin anymore. He's bam bam. One minute I'm fun, and the next minute I'm, I have this race face. So um, you just really don't know what you're going to get with me. <laughs> he is must see TV. I wish there was a camera that followed Justin Barsha around the entire race is because, yes, he's very aggressive. The way he rides a motorcycle maybe isn't ideal, but it's exciting. He is by far the most aggressive rider. He's been that way since he was a kid. It's like that even into his 30s now. We saw some great stuff out of Justin in 2023, but we also saw some injuries. And now he has been injured again at the end of the SMX playoffs, which means that he's kind of, you know, having to recover from that while getting ready for the 2024 season. Clearly, he's intending on riding through 2025 as he signed his contract there with the team. Staying with the whole Tully Designs Red Bull Gas Gas Factory Racing team has been extremely beneficial for me, especially this season, because I'm, I'm getting a little later start into training and things like that, so I don't have to relearn a bike or relearn a team, and if I can just do my training and focus on you know, being ready to, to win, and that's always the goal. His career was once defined by the dramatic arc of his rise, one that began with a victory in just his second career start. Now entering his 15th year, Father Time is no longer on his side. I do believe uh, I have a lot more years to give, and I'm really excited to be working with this Gas Gas team. Definitely going to finish out my, my career here, so it's quite awesome, and I'm extremely lucky to have such a, such a good crew around me. If he could come in, have a really strong Montreal Supercross Championship, 
follow that up with a really strong pro motocross championship he's going to build points throughout the season going into those final three playoff rounds and we saw how strong he was right before he crashed in la and broke his collarbone yet again he was running out front he was setting some of the fastest lap times of the night so anything's possible for a guy like him a couple of collarbone surgeries is no big deal i got a couple plates in here now so i'm stronger than ever so <laughs> I'm excited, man. It's not often you find a rider that resonates with the fans like Aaron Plessinger. It captures the hearts of every fan, young and old, and invigorates them to cheer just that little bit extra. Does anybody have more fun at the races than Aaron Plessinger? He looks the part, he's kind of tall and lanky, he's got the mullet, even the way he rides the motorcycle is pretty loose more like a cowboy than a supercross or motocross rider. I'm just a regular dude who, who, who likes riding dirt bikes and, and happens to be pretty good at it. This guy, you talk about a fan favorite. He comes out opening ceremonies. I mean, he's got the cowboy hat going on. He's got the hair flow going. Just a little cowboy trying to race his dirt bike, man. I want him to win so we can listen to his podium speeches. He has some of the best podium speeches feel good. The fans were unreal. I can hear them every lap. Um, man, everywhere I go, they make me feel at home. He's managed to keep this fun-loving personality intact, but at the same time, I think we realize he's a serious enough competitor when the helmet goes on. He had a career year, and it was a massive step towards him getting where he ultimately wants to be. Let's not forget Detroit. He was so close to a maiden victory, and it was torn from him from an untimely mistake. Detroit was tough, you know. I led just about 20 minutes of the race and then ended up you know, catching my foot on a rut and flung me off the bike and uh, did a front flip, and that kind of ended my race. He cried on TV that night, and I think a lot of fans around the world echoed those thoughts. No one hurts. Um, no one hurts a lot. Wanting to get that elusive win that has been a thorn in my side for, for a while. I need to, you know, rip that thing off and, and get it done this year. While consistency was a trademark for Aaron Plessinger throughout the 2023 season, his contract with Red Bull KTM expires after 2024. He's not getting any younger, but the fact that he's a fan favorite, guess what? Who cares if he wins or not? We happy he's on the track. If Aaron Plessinger can come out and he can snag a win early on, I think that will help him and, and give him that confidence to know that he can he can do it. I'm ready to win some races. I'm ready to get back behind that gate, and I'm ready to see 50,000 fans cheering me on. Yeah, let's go, baby. He arrived on the scene as a skinny 15-year-old picked by many to be the next greatest of his generation. Adam Cincerillo was a child prodigy in this sport. Everyone expected Adam Cincerillo to rip off championships and really rewrite history in this sport. But that's the challenge of expectations like that is if anything goes wrong, if you run into a rash of injuries or just things simply don't go your way, then it feels like you're underperforming. By most measures, it's been an extremely successful run for Adam Cincerillo, but if you understand the expectations that have surrounded him his entire life, that's where it comes into question. Through trials and hardships, Adam C. and Cerullo has developed into one of the more thoughtful and theoretical minds in the sport. I definitely think I'm somebody that is built to persevere. You know, I, I've gone through, as you do in sports and life, I've gone through a lot of ups and downs, and. To my core, I'm someone who never gives up and ultimately just loves dirt bikes. This was a building year. He's had some injuries. He had a nerve injury that uh, still to this day, I think bothered him in 2023 at certain races, but making all the races and making the whole series was something that he wanted to accomplish. Boom, check the box off for that. Super motocross is a sport that will leave its mark on those that dare attempt to conquer it. Adam C. and Cerullo knows it all too well. A full season finally healthy and a career best sixth in the championship has given him reinvigorated hope. I definitely think I rode a little bit on the cautious side this year, 
just felt like it was something I, I had to do and erred on the side of caution. And, and now it's about kind of how do I integrate that speed and intensity kind of to the stable base that I've created. It would be such a nice full circle story for him and honestly for the whole sport. I think everyone is rooting for Adam Cincerullo. Can he find that magic again? I think the fact that Kawasaki has been so loyal to Adam says a lot about the potential that they still see in him. I've been with Kawasaki since I was seven years old. 2004, I signed. You really don't see that happen too often, where somebody goes their whole career um, on one bike. I look at him going into 2024, he's only going to be better. We're still going to be smooth and smart, but I might get a little nuts. You know, who knows? Perhaps no rider performs his best when counted out better than Jason Anderson. Jason Anderson marches to the beat of his own drum. He does better when he's operating as an underdog. When he joined Monster Energy Kawasaki, he came in and was written off by most of the industry. So then he blossomed. He performed brilliantly. That caused there to be expectation for 2023. And honestly, that was a disaster. So now he's back to being an underdog again, and I think that suits him best. Being a, a factory rider at age eight, all the way till now I'm 30, it's, uh, it's what I've done, it's, it's who I am, but uh, at the same time, I feel like I've definitely done it different and uh, done it how I wanted to, because I think I'm pretty stubborn in that sense. We make a lot of jokes about his loose riding style, the jersey being untucked. But I mean, Jason's personality really does shine through, especially as he can make some super technical, almost dicey sections look razor smooth. He had really good speed. It just did, it didn't show up. And he had like weird tip overs. It just seemed like he was just trying too hard. Sometimes, you know, things happen, especially in Supercross, because it's such tight racing. Um, it's kind of hard to avoid, you know, any little mishaps with uh, a pile up or, or something like that. It's really tough to be um, in the lead every time you're out there. I think there's a, a lot of adversity that you have to overcome, and I think that's what makes becoming a Supercross champion, you know, um, that tough. A silky, smooth style has always been a signature, but the 2018 450 champion is also determined to regain his previous form in 2024. He is a past Monster Energy Supercross champion. He knows how to manage a 17-round series, and if he's able to do that, he'll go into the SMX playoffs in, in a great spot. He's got something to prove. He's got a new contract from the folks at Kawasaki. And I think Jason is coming in under the radar a little bit. And then he comes out and surprises us all. So it'll be interesting to see if Jason can follow that up with some of that underdog fighter mentality that we've seen before. In sports, there are those that capture the hearts of the fans, those that invigorate them at every turn. Throughout his illustrious career, Malcolm Stewart has grabbed the admiration of those that surround him at every stage. Remember Malcolm Stewart? He's been missing for so long now that it feels as though a lot of people have forgotten what he brings to the sport. He's another rider who everyone cheers for. He too is searching for that elusive win, and I think that everyone wants to see him get it. Last year was a bummer to see Malcolm go down with a knee injury. Of course, when you get hurt like that, you're just like, man, this this is, you know, it sucks. You hate everything about it. But I think the hardest thing for me is Saturday nights, right? Like watching everybody else race but me. It took eight, nine months for me to get back on the motorcycle. And once I got back on the motorcycle, there's a part where I was like, I'm not sure if I know how to ride a motorcycle. And then it just naturally snapped back in place. And I was like, OK, I'm, I'm jumping again. We're in our like second week of boot camp. It's been going good. It's just good to be back riding for me. We're going to come back for a 2024 swinging and, and have a good year. I still believe in the guy. I think he, he has the capabilities of winning. Uh, not going to be easy, but he has that raw speed. And I think the, the tail of the tape this year is definitely going to be who is going to be willing to get out of that comfort zone. First things first, uh, let's get across that checker flag first, get a little bit of heat on my back, and then we'll see where we're at. Now, for the fans, a lot of times they don't care. They're going to cheer for him just as wildly if he's in eighth place as if he's in third place because he's Malcolm Stewart. He is a fan favorite for good reason. His attitude is always awesome. He has so much character on the motorcycle. He's truly a joy to watch ride. And I think the sport 
is truly better when he's good. He's always got a smile on his face, and uh, it's going to be fantastic to have him back in 2024. You know, we enjoy it. That's what we do. You can't always be good. It can't be, always be cherries, right? You got to have a little bit of lemons in there. <laughs> the Super Motocross Preview Show is brought to you by Monster Energy, proud partner of Monster Energy Supercross, and the Utah Sports Commission, proud partner of Monster Energy Supercross. As the greatest battle they've encountered approaches, preparations for a new season are well underway. It's the pinnacle championship of our sport where the elite come to compete. We have guys from all over the world coming to race this series. It's the most grueling, mentally, physically tough. It travels everywhere. It's truly a, a diverse championship. What the fans can expect for 2024 is some good racing. You never know who's gonna win. High intensity and exciting. For the fans, I know it's gonna be absolutely epic. Shoot, sometimes I wish I was a fan to be able to see all the action that's gonna happen. I just can't wait. What makes Anaheim 1 special is the unknown of the new season. Every time I come here, like you think you're gonna be like the old, the old crusty dog. <laughs> it's gonna be all good. You get nervous every time, at least that's been my case. It's a very tough race to deal with. A series that stretches from coast to coast, visiting the biggest and brightest venues, such as AT&T Stadium, Lucas Oil Stadium, and Nissan Stadium in Nashville, among others. And to iconic tracks such as Redbud, High Point, and more is truly a testament to a rider's will. This is the Super Motocross World Championship. When we show up, we're bringing it strong. There's nothing that can beat us. Yeah, we heard it all before that cheap talk can't defeat us. Should be very, very exciting. Great competition and great racing. It's gonna be wild. If, if you ain't tuned in, you're missing out for sure. The 2024 Super Motocross World Championship will air live all season long on Peacock, NBC, and USA Network. Tickets are now available at supermotocross.com. Hi folks, Lee Diffie from NBC Sports here. If you truly enjoyed what you just watched, you can get more news, interviews, and highlights by subscribing to the Motorsports on NBC YouTube page. You can get it all, so go for it.